Say goodbye to your father. You are not going to touch him. Really? Well, why don't you try and stop me? Oh, wait. I forgot. You can't control your powers. You're so pathetic. Ugh. Greta, leave her alone. Shut up. I could never stand either of you. Focus. You can beat her. You're stronger than her. Any last words before you burn to death? Yeah, you should really be more careful where you step. You froze her. I knew you could do it. <laughs> Your mother would be so proud of you. <laughs> Doctor, how is he? Your father is going to be okay. He has a very bad case of pneumonia, but as long as he rests, he should be fine. I now present to you the girl who saved my life, who I am so proud to call my daughter, your new Snow Queen, Alicia. Honey, would you do us the honors? Congratulations, my dear. Thank you, but I have a question. Why have you never talked to me through this necklace before? The magic in this necklace only allows me to talk to you in your greatest and darkest moments. But know that I am so proud and I will always be with you. Mom, look, I can get a teddy bear or a paintbrush. I think I'm gonna go with teddy bear. <gasps> no, pick the paintbrush. But I said pick it. Okay. My paintbrush came in. Oh, thank goodness. There, that's for you. Now paint money. Money? Why money? Honey, just paint it. Okay. Okay, I'm done, but I don't understand why- Shh! Look! Your paintbrush is magic. No way. So you're telling me that everything I paint will come to life? Yes, the paintbrush only works for you. Well, I want to paint a puppy. Honey, no. Don't be selfish. You need to think of others before yourself, and there's lots of things that I need. Okay, here's your gold crown. Oh, it's perfect. Mom, can you please make me some food? All this painting is making me really hungry. Why, of course. But don't draw anything while I'm cooking. I'm gonna paint something she would never let me have. My own boyfriend. Honey, dinners. Let me see that. What did you paint? Nothing. I was just scribbling. Really? Then let me see it. No, wait. What is this? This is going in the garbage. Please, he wasn't done yet. He? Were you trying to draw a boyfriend? No. Give me that. No, this is my magic paintbrush. You can't just- Don't tell me what I can't do. I'm confiscating all of your paint stuff until tomorrow. Sorry, Mom, but I'm finishing this. The last thing I need is his eye color. I think this blue will look nice. He's done. Did you learn your lesson? Yeah, I did. Good. Here's your painting supplies back. Today, there is a lot I need you to paint for me. I finished your purple hair clips. Thank you, honey. Can I be done now? Hmm. I know you're not that tired. Well, it has been two hours, so okay, you rest. Mom, five more minutes. I'm not your mom. I'm your boyfriend. I'm your boyfriend. You look exactly like how I pictured you. Down to the hair color and everything. I can't believe this. I didn't even do the best job painting you, but you seem to have come out. Who is this? That's the delivery man. Delivery man? I didn't order anything. Excuse me. I'm her boyfriend. What? You disobeyed me. Mom, I have been painting so much stuff for you, and all I ask for is just one boyfriend. Please. Do you have my hair clips? Yeah, they're right here. What are you doing? Testing a theory. If I rip his painting, he disappears. Look, I found it. Stop! Mom, let go. Please, you're hurting him. Oh, that's the point. No! It's okay. Hey, catch! Don't give that to her! What are you doing? Something I should have done a long time ago. Getting you out of my life. You can't do that- Where did she go? I, uh, painted her on a tropical island, but don't worry. I'll make sure she's well taken care of. Daddy, what is that? That's your likeness score. From now on, every time someone likes you, your score will go up. And when you reach 100%, you get to meet your soulmate. Wow. Snow, meet my new wife. Hi. Oh, hello. Daddy, I thought you said when people like me, my score will go up, not down. I don't think she likes me. Of course I do. There just must be a glitch. Uh, the king's passing was so unexpected. 
princess, I brought you a rose for your loss. Thank you. It's lovely. Where is my rose? It was a loss for me as well. He was my husband. I'm so sorry. I was just thinking of the princess, your majesty. Snow? Yes? I just noticed your percentage has been going up a lot lately. And father said that when I reach 100%, I'll be able to meet my soulmate. Hmm, no. That won't happen. Why? Because, dear, it's not meant to be for you. In fact, follow me. Let me show you something. Here, you need to see this. A book? It's a magic book. Now open it and see why you can't meet your soulmate. Read the words. Magic book in my hand. Who is the most liked royal in all the land? The queen is the most liked. Her score is 80%. You see, dear, as queen I have a reputation to uphold. It was very hard for me to get to 80%, and I can't have you surpass me. But why can't we both reach 100%? No, it's either me or no one. From now on, you will no longer be allowed to leave this castle. But I promised the village kids that I would bring them toys today. So your likeness score can go up? I don't think so. I'm not going to break my promise. Thank you. And one for you. Thank you, princess. Wow, that was very kind of you, princess. Are those your guards? There she is! Get her! You have left the castle without permission, princess. I'm sorry. The queen orders you back now. Uh, don't hold her like that! Wait! My queen! We have found her. You directly disobeyed me. I'm sorry, I- Silence! Look at your score! I didn't mean for that to happen. Your percentage is higher than mine. Shall I still take her into the woods, my queen? Yes, and make sure she doesn't return. Mm. I'll make it quick. No, please. Quiet. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Think about my father. What would he want you to do? The king would be so disappointed in me. I can't kill you, princess. You must leave here and never come back. But- Run, now! <laughs> hey, shoo! Get out of here! Why are you out in these woods alone? It's a long story, but my blouse, it's stuck in the vines. Don't worry, my dear. I will set you free. Come with me. It's not safe here. Son! Dad, where were... you? I just found this girl. Dad, this is the princess. Are you okay? Yes, but the queen, she's trying to have me killed. Why? I can't believe this is all because she's jealous of you. You can stay here with us as long as you need, princess. Our cabin is safe. Thank you so much. Of course. Here's an extra pillow in case you need it tonight. Thank you. I don't think I caught your name. Right. How rude of me. My name is Zachary, princess. Well, I appreciate your help, Zachary. <laughs> Good morning, my dear. My son and I are off to go hunting. We'll be gone for a few hours. While we're gone, do not open that door to anyone. I promise, I won't. How did you get in here? Go. Be free. I guess the likeness score works on animals, too. Now that I'm at 100%, I get to meet my soulmate. That must be him. Now that I reached 100%, that has to be my soulmate. <gasps> Who are you? Oh, hello, my dear. I hope I didn't scare you. Actually, I'm not supposed to have strangers- But wait! I'm here to give you your soulmate. In that case, come inside. I brought this for you. An apple? Yes, you must be hungry. I don't like apples. But dear, I sense you're very lonely ever since your parents passed away. How do you know that? Because I'm magic. Isn't that how you feel? Yes, I... I've been so lonely. This is why I'm here, to help you, dear. One bite of this apple will make your soulmate appear. Do you promise? Cross my heart. You'll never be lonely again. Isn't it just... Delicious. You're so gullible. <laughs> Princess, we're home. No. This is my fault, Dad. Son, it is. I should have never left her alone. You'll be a queen in heaven. Goodbye, Snow. Soulmate found. Zachary? Princess, you're... You're alive. True love's kiss. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe what the queen did. This has gone too far, my dear. You must take back your kingdom. You're right. Who is the most liked royal in all the land? Princess Snow is the most liked. That's impossible. She's dead. Think again. Stepmother, you're under arrest. Guards, take her away. Get off of me! 
I'll be taking this. No! That belongs to me! That crown belongs to Snow now, and I gotta say, it really suits her. But honestly, we were all just trying to make the best of the situation we were in. So if that meant drinking, that meant drinking. So we get to the funeral. We all cut the line to go say our goodbyes at the casket. I'm pretty drunk at this point. We're saying our goodbyes at the casket. And one of my great aunts, from who I don't really fucking like, from the back screams like, hurry up, you're taking too long. I'm like, this bitch did not. So I immediately turn around and I'm like, shut the fuck up, Aunt Susan. She's saying goodbye to her brother. She's saying goodbye to her boyfriend. And I'm saying goodbye to my cousin. Fuck off. In a room full of people. But everyone was like on my side and they're like, yeah, yeah. Like, let them say their goodbyes. Let them say their goodbyes. They were honestly probably terrified of me after that. But I was like, don't rush our goodbye process. So we finally make it to the church and I'm sitting front row with like my sisters, my cousins, my aunt, my uncle, we're all like front row. So it's time for me to like go up and give my speech, which is literally me reading a passage. So I don't know why I keep calling it a speech. So the pastor calls my name to come up and I'm drunk. I'm fully drunk at this point, not gonna lie. Also, the pastor's very hot. Or the priest, I'm not really sure, the one that's like wearing white. So I start saying my speech and mind you, I'm like a little bit too smiley, a little too giggly for a funeral, but I'm just trying to act like I'm not drunk. And I know if I don't like smile a little bit, I'm going to bawl my fucking eyes out. And like, that's 20 times more embarrassing than like me just being like, <laughs> I'm doing well. My speech is going great until I come across this word. I think it's Philippians, like Philippians 415 said this and in my head, I'm not reading Philippians, I'm reading Filipinos. Like my brain is like Filipinos, Filipinos, Filipinos. And I'm like, I know it's not saying Filipinos 415. But in that moment, I just, I cannot understand that word. I'm not gonna say Filipinos in the middle of my cousin's funeral when I know it's not Filipinos either. I do this, I go, reading from passage from the, oh, you guys know what I'm talking about, 415. On this day, I literally said in a crowded church, oh, you guys know what I mean just like that. I make eye contact with my aunt and my uncle and my cousins, my mom, my sister in the front row and everybody's like, like, what the fuck? Like, except my mom, my mom's like. And so I get to my seat and my cousins and my sisters, mostly my sisters were like, what the fuck was that, Livy? Like, what was that? I was like, I could not stop reading Filipinos. I don't know why I could not stop reading that. And I was like, and I'm fucking drunk, you guys. They're like, so are we. I was like, well, you didn't have to give a speech in the middle of like the pastor talking. This is the story time of how my ex almost got me killed. So my ex and I were broken up during this time and I received a text from him that was like, you need to come over, we need to talk immediately. I'm like, <laughs> I literally knew he was still in love with me, but I didn't wanna get back together with him whatsoever. But I was like, you know what? It won't hurt the ego to hear him confess how in love with me he really is. So I'm like, ugh. Oh, I'll come over, like whatever, we can talk. But like, just so you know, I'm not getting back together with you. He's like, it has nothing to do with that. I'm like, okay, sure, <laughs> like, okay, sure. So I drive over there and this man gets in my car and he's very like panicked. He's like in a frazzle. I don't know, in a frazzle, whatever. He's just like very anxious. I'm sitting there like, <laughs> What do you want to talk about? Like, what could it possibly be? Because I know this man is like, we are soulmates. Like, I've done this talk one too many times with him. I know where this is going. So he's like, Livy, I need to tell you something, but you cannot tell a soul. I'm like, who the fuck am I going to tell? Like, what is it? He's like, I got involved in a scamming thing where I scammed people. And I felt so guilty that I gave the bank the $3,000 I was supposed to give the guy. And now this guy has a hit out on me. I go... What the fuck? You weren't lying. You really didn't want to get back together with me. No, but in that moment, I'm like, wait, wait, what? Because from what I knew about my ex, like he wasn't involved in those kinds of things. So I'm like, where the fuck did this energy come from? And then I'm like, a hit out? Like they want to kill you? It's like, yeah, like they're saying that they're going to kill me. At this point, I have a million thoughts racing through my head. The number one being, who decides to be a scammer and then feels guilty and gives it all to the bank? Like, I don't know much about scamming, but if you're gonna scam, do it right. The second thing that's going through my mind, this man was never this motivated when we were together. So I'm like, you got a new bitch that you're scamming for? And like, you're gonna take her out with all your scamming money? Like, you never took me out on nice dates. So like, 
why did you just automatically decide to start scamming? Like, why do you need this money so bad? Like, clearly you have another bitch that you're trying to impress. So I get a little bit angry. And he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm just like, I've never seen you so motivated about money. Like, why are you motivated about money now? He's like, none of this matters. They're trying to kill me. I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, show me these messages that the guy sent you. My ex pulls up his Instagram. What about two? You remember the story time how I am somehow the reason for my mom and her ex-boyfriend's breakup. I was having a girls night with like all of my best friends at this restaurant in Chicago. And as soon as I sat at my table with my friends, I looked out the window, saw my mom's boyfriend with another woman. But I think nothing of this because if he's with another woman, I'm like, oh my God, my mom knows. Of course my mom knows. Like, why would she not? <laughs> Regardless, I take a photo, send it to my sister. I'm like, ugh, look who's here. Because I don't want to have to go say hi. Like, I know I have to go say hello. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, it's a girl's night. I don't, because he'll be like, he loves me so much. He'll want me to sit at the table, buy me drinks, talk for hours. And I just like, don't have that in me. I just want to drink my dirty martini with my girls and just like not be bothered by him really. The joke is on fucking me. So I go outside with me. <laughs> I go outside with one of my best friends and I'm like, you know what? Let's just say hi to him so I can get this over with and we can just like enjoy our night. So I walk up to him and I'm like, hello. And he looks at me like this. Clearly the man is startled. And immediately he's like, oh my God, what are you doing here? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like he is not happy to see me whatsoever. And I'm like thrown off by his energy. And I'm like, what are the vibes here? But I introduce myself to her and I'm like, hi, I'm Dina's daughter, his girlfriend. And he's like, oh my God, when I saw you girls walking up here, I thought you guys were hookers. Mind you, this is my best friend's first time meeting him. And I'm like, what the fuck? First of all, I did not look like a hooker. I was wearing jeans and a long sleeve top. I was like, this is what hookers wear. And I look at him and I'm like, she's wearing a Balenciaga sneakers right now. And you think we're fucking hookers? I'm like, what are you saying? Like, you're making absolutely no sense right now. And then this man is like, are you on something? Oh my God, you're on drugs right now. Side note, you guys need to remember or just need to know in general. I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs like any hard drugs or anything like that because I have so much anxiety and I've just made it a known fact with all of my friends and my family. Like my mom knows this. Literally everybody knows this. I'm like... You can give me hard drugs, but I'll check us all into the psych ward because it's just not going to go well. So I stay away from that because I'm already an anxious person and a latte gets me fucked up. It makes me feel like jumping off a building. So like I stay away from the hard drugs. So when he's looking at me being like, you're on drugs, like you're fucked up right now. I'm like, I've had one sip of my Tito's extra dirty martini with blue cheese olives. I am not fucked up right now. And you and I both know I don't do drugs. So go to part two. So now I'm really mad because my mom's loving boyfriend who I'm so embarrassed to have to go talk to because he loves me so much is calling me and my best friend hookers and then accusing me of being on drugs. And it's 5 p.m. on a Monday. So you guys know I'm crazy, I'm outspoken. Normally in this situation, I would lose my mind and I would just go off on him. I'd be like, why are you being such a fucking weirdo? Is it because you're literally cheating on my mom right now and I just caught you and you feel guilty? But I just decide to not do that. I'm like, let me play it cool because this is fucking weird. And his little friend he's with, that little woman, she's like, yeah, oh my God, I thought you were a hooker too. I thought you were a hooker. I'm like, I don't even fucking know you. I, I have never even met you in my life. And my mom's boyfriend just keeps agreeing. He's like, yeah, like, you know, this part of Chicago. I'm like, no, I, I really don't know. So I'm like, okay, whatever, this is weird. And you just embarrassed me in front of my best friend. And listen, you guys, I can take accountability. Like if I was dressed like a hooker, whatever the fuck that means, or if I was just like super revealing or anything, I would admit that. I'd be like, you know what? He had a point. I was wearing jeans, but he was so convincing that I was on drugs. I'm like, am I on drugs? I was like, did I just get drugged and like not even know it? Because he's like, you're on drugs, you're on drugs. And I'm like, fuck, am I? Then I'm like, okay, whatever, bye. And I go back inside and I continue to take more pictures. So I have evidence and I send them to my sister. And she's like, I'll tell mom tomorrow morning. Like, I don't want to make her manic right now. I'm like, valid. So the next morning I call my mom. I tell her everything that happened. I'm like, mom, he would not stop telling me I looked like a hooker. And he kept convincing me I was on drugs, which is really insulting to me because you know I don't do any drugs. She's like, I know, I know. Like, I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm sorry he's fucking weird. And I'm like, mom, did you know he was getting dinner with this woman? And she's like, no, he told me he was golfing. So I'm like, oh, now this makes so much fucking sense. So then he calls me and he's like, do you even remember your night? You were on so many drugs last night. And that's when I lose it.
I'm like, shut the fuck up. You and I both know I don't do drugs and you and I both know that you got caught doing something wrong that you weren't supposed to be doing and you're gaslighting the absolute shit out of me so you don't look like the bad guy. And he's like, no, you're on drugs, you're on drugs. And I'm like, I had one dirty martini last night. I remember the whole fucking night you're gaslighting me. He's like, you're right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm like, shut up. I'm like, you embarrassed me in front of one of my best friends. You embarrassed my mother too by being a weird fuck. 